A quick review of what we've already gone over in previous days. When do we use the law of sines and the law of cosines? If you're provided with two angles and any side, we'll use the law of sines. Again, we can quickly find the third angle by adding these up and subtracting from 180. Uh, when you're provided with two sides and an angle opposite of one of them, we will also use the law of sines. Now, when do we use the law of cosines? When we're provided with three sides or two sides and the angle that's created where those two sides meet. Do me a favor right now, and I want you to read this. You don't have to write it down. I want you to read this, and I want you to draw a picture depicting this information. I'm going to give you one minute. Go. I'm going to restate the directions. You are not going to write down word for word. You are going to draw a picture that models this information. A pole tilts towards the sun at an 8 degree angle from the vertical and it casts a 22 foot shadow. The angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the pole is 43 degrees. How tall is the pole? Thirty more seconds to draw this picture. By a raise of hands, who feels like I'm reading the problem but I don't know where to start in drawing the picture? Just quick hands up. Okay, so let's start with just some basics here. I already drew the picture, but this is how I would start. We know a sun is involved, so let's just draw a real quick picture of a sun. We know when the sun hits an object, does the shadow go back towards the sun, the direction of the sun, or away from it? Away from it. Okay, so let's take this right now and let's draw this pole. We ultimately want to know how long is this pole. And it states that from a vertical position, it tilts 8 degrees in the direction of the sun. Bless you. And it says that the shadow created from the sun is 22 feet long. Now from a vertical position down to the ground, that would be a 90 degree angle. So this is what I have right now. The last thing it says to us is the angle of elevation is 43 degrees. All right, so I went ahead and I drew this picture a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit better. So this is my pole. This is the 8 degrees where it tilts towards the sun. This is the shadow that's cast that's 22 feet long and the angle of elevation. Give me one second. And the angle of elevation, okay? And we want to know ultimately what is this. So I took it out of the context of the problem and I just drew a triangle. This is 43 degrees. I know this is 98 because we have the 90 degree angle from the vertical to the ground it creates a 90 degree angle and then I need to add this 8 degree where it tilts towards the sun. 90 plus 8 is 98. Let's grab our calculators and we can figure out what angle C is or this missing angle. So I have 98 plus 43 and I'm going to subtract 180 from this amount to end up with 39. <coughs> Now, in this situation, if we didn't, if I didn't say to you, we're going to do applications of law of sine today, we would look and we'd say, okay, I have one angle or two angles and one side. When you have two angles and any side, we would use law of sines, and that's what I was provided. So that's what told me I'm going to use law of sines. Now that I know all three, let's start with what I know. So I'm going to do the sine of c over little c. And I'm just myself, I'm going to make a little check mark because I know those quantities. I know angle C is 39, and I know side C, uh, I know side C is 22. And I do want to go back here, and when you watch some of the videos, remember you could do the same thing, bless you, you could do the same thing by having the length of the side on top and the sign of the angle on the bottom um, when we solve. Ultimately, you're going to get the same answer as long as you continue with setting up our proportion where sides are on top, angles on the bottom, or vice versa.
Okay, now when we think about what other part are we going to go after, well, we want to figure out this length. We want to know from B to C. So I'm going to go after angle A and side A. Now I know angle A, I don't know side A. Okay, cross multiplying. This is what I'm trying to figure out. So I would take this times this, and I would set it equal to this times this, right? So I have the sine of C times A equals the sine of A times C, and I'm trying to isolate this A, so I'm going to divide by the sine of C. So I have little a equals sine A times C over sine of C. Make sure the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in, go to mode, and make sure we're in degrees. I was not in degrees. Now I'm going to put in the information I have. So this is going to be sine of A. Sine of A is 43. And this is going to be the sine of C. Sine of C is 39. And little c has a length of 22. So I'm going to enter these two, press enter, and then divide by this quantity. So I'm going to do the sine. Actually, I'm going to type in 22 times the sine of 43. Enter, divided by the sine of 39. See if you get the exact same amount. Please check for me. Do you come up with the same amount? Sure, when we label this, we're talking in terms of feet. This is a length. So I'm going to round. They should tell us what we're, we need to round to, but I'm going to say 23.84 feet. This is the length of the pole. So sorry, let me move. We, um, as a group, are going to draw this picture. I've already drawn it, but let's do this first together, and then I'll show a picture that maybe is a little bit nicer. So let's start here. We know this is starting at A. And so I'm going to go like this. And we know the distance it tells us from C to A is a distance of 8 kilometers. Now from A, it specifically says it goes south, so it goes south and west at an angle of 52 degrees. So I'm going to make this, and this is 52 degrees and it goes all the way to B. Now I have to make that line again, that's vertical, and it says that from B, it then goes in the direction of south and east. So south and east, and it makes this angle. So this angle right here, this angle where it goes back to the southeast, this is the angle that would be 40 degrees. And then it proceeds all the way to C before finally going straight back to A. And it gives us a picture that I'm going to show you in a second. Now, I know you guys are doing very well in your geometry classes, whether you took it last year or maybe you're currently taking it. We can see I have two parallel lines here and a transversal that cuts through them. So if this is 40 degrees, what other angle is 40 degrees? Angle C. This is 40 degrees. And now I have one side and two angles, which makes us use the law of cosine. Please add these together and subtract from 180 to come up with angle B. Please add these together and subtract from 180 to come up with angle B. We have 88 degrees. And now I'm going to do the sine of angle B over the side opposite of it, side B is equal to 8. And I ultimately, I need to know all of the lengths, right? I need to know all the lengths. So I'm going to choose to do the smaller of the two angles next, the smaller of the two angles next. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do sine of 40 equals sine of 40 degrees over side C. Now, when you get going at this, you're going to see that first you're going to multiply here, and then you're going to set it equal to this quantity. So I'm going to take, if I do this side first, I have 8 times the sine of 40 degrees. And then I would set that equal to, to sine of 88 degrees times C. And then ultimately, what do I have to do to isolate the C? I'd have to divide. So I'm just going to do that right now. Divide by the sine of 88. Okay, go ahead, please, and solve this. And let's go ahead and let's round to the nearest. Let's round to the nearest hundred. So can you raise your hands if you have 5.15? 5.15? Okay, let's write that down. I'm going to bring it right up here. 
5.15. Keep it in the exact same units. Turn to your partner. Why can you not use Pythagorean theorem to figure out this third side? Why can you not do that? Go. Pythagorean theorems can only be used for a right triangle. So how do we figure it out? Well, let's go back to what we know. We know the sine of 88 degrees over 8. And now let's figure out our last one. So I'm going to go over A. Equals the sine of 52 over side A. I'm going to do the same concept. I'm going to multiply these two. So 8 times the sine of 52 degrees. And it would be equal to A length A times the sine of 88. A times the sine of 88. But then to isolate the A, I would divide by the sine of 88 degrees. And I have that A is equivalent to 6.31, oops, sorry, this is kilometers, not degrees. And my question is approximately what is the total distance of the race? Let's add up these three lengths. So I have 6.31 plus 5.15 plus 8, and I have approximately 19.46, approximately 19.46. Remember, we do need to add on to that what is the unit. It is kilometers.